and proper techniques and training to administer help towards um, personnel in need of medical assistance or medical help. And about myself, I love the sport of cricket. I enjoy reading at times and socializing with my family. Okay, thank you, Mr. George. Mr. Wilson. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Wilson. I was... Um, just one moment, Mr. Wilson, just one moment. Um, let us just address the issue of make etiquette for um, the sessions. No, guys, you all have to remember that once your mic is open, then we can hear all the background noises that are taking place. So we're going to ask that once you're not speaking, that you mute your mics. All right? Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Wilson. Yes, um, good morning again. My name is Michael Wilson. I was employed at the Jamaica Defense Force where I was privileged to do the C3 medical assistance course. That's what sparked my interest in the medical field. Um, what I'm hoping to gain from this course is just to Build on the medical knowledge that I've already acquired, and I'm just expecting to improve my skills. Basically. Um, so something about myself, um, I really like um, taking care of others, and um, I, like to, I like to read a lot, and I like to listen to music. That's, that's it. Very well. That means you will have no problem with this course because since you like to read, you'll have a lot to read. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Miss Lewis, Kayon Lewis. Hi, everyone. Good morning. We're hearing you. Go ahead. Ms. Lewis is having some technical problems. Can you hear us, Ms. Lewis? Hello. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Can OK, you go ahead. You know? Yes, we can hear you now. I, OK, I'm not able to um, share a video right now where I'm at because the computer doesn't have a camera. Sure. Um, so. Of course, I'm Kayan Lewis. I'm actually an admin assistant um, at the Kiss Baking Company. Um, I chose to do this course because I wanted a change in field. Um, in terms of what I do, I am very passionate about helping people. Of course, I wanted to become a nurse. And uh, however, I am in the business field. I'm currently pursuing a degree at the University of Western Studies in uh, management. However, I just want a change to do what I really like to do. So that's the reason why I'm doing this course. And of course, at the end of this course, I do expect to um, be in a better position to help others as I want to do so I can continue in this field, in the medical field. All right, thank you. Over to Mr. Roy and Manning. Yeah. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, and especially good morning to you, Ms. McKay. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Uh, can you hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. 
All right, awesome. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Royan Manning. I am 24 years old. I am um, really interested in the pre-hospital um, services. It is my goal to start at the groundwork so that I can, you know, continue to become a paramedic as my end goal and even higher once the opportunity arrives. Um, what I from this course is, I mean, all of the knowledge, everything, so I can utilize it and help persons because I like helping people. I don't know, it just gives me this this feeling. Um, I'm currently somewhat um, a customer service. That's what I've been doing for years years not necessarily something I wanted to do but you know you had to do what you have to do to make ends meet so changing that going into something I really want and I'm really sure I'm going to enjoy which is the medical field so I'm expecting for this to be the way to achieve all of my goals and dreams something about me I'm very determined um, I believe everything can be achieved once you put in the work so putting in the work right now Great, thank you, Mr. Manning. Okay. All right, over to Mr. Powell. Zandre, did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. Uh, good morning. I'm Zandre Powell, currently employed as at JDF, however, on a vacation. I'm a C3 medic, are the um, EMS, EMR, or emergency medical response, as you would have stated, or would have stated in the basic part of the whole emergency medical response, EMS setting. I'm interested in this course because I'm looking to gain further knowledge in terms of medicine. So I'm taking it step by step. So it might seem a bit slow now. Each step will actually get me. It's my goal I would achieve and that would um, at some point in time. Um, um, that would be so much for a line, but it's just um, you need it. So achieving that. and watching see okay um not sure if mr powell is finished because i wasn't hearing him clearly i'm not sure if the problem is on my end or his end were you able to hear him? The rest of you, were you able to hear what he was saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, yes, we could hear him. It was breaking okay. up a little bit, but we could. Okay, all right. Because I know I'm also having technical difficulties on my side with the internet. So, um, all right. Thank you so much, then, Mr. Powell. No. I think other persons are trying to join and they're being kicked off and they're joining back. I'm not sure that I have anybody else new yet that has joined us. So we will just move into um, the introduction of our instructors and I will allow Mr. Rufus to begin and so he can introduce his team. Over to you, Mr. Rufus. Good morning. My name is Ryan Rufus. I'm a level four paramedic. I'm in the EMS approximately 17, maybe 18 years. My experience spans working in the private ambulance setting, the fire service, correctional service, industrial, and um, briefly 
there is some hospital experience. For the duration for most of your program, I will be the, the lead instructor for this course. That's it for now. I'll allow the other instructors to introduce themselves. But go ahead, Mr. Paul. Mr. Powell. Yes, good morning. I'm trying to share my video. Okay. Okay, good morning. My name is Franklin Powell and I am an advanced emergency medical technician. I have over 15 years experience in the EMS field. I've worked in the private ambulance setting. I was worked in the industrial setting and I'm currently working in the government setting where I am now employed with the Turks and Caicos Island National EMS system. I am working as an EMT in their BLS ambulance service. I have also completed the online portion of the paramedics course with a US based school. And last week, I also completed my certification as a chemist instructor with a school in Texas. I'm very passionate about um, EMS, and from I became an advanced emergency medical technician in 2012. I have been assisting at the university at FEMS with the training program. My hobbies are jogging and playing dominoes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Powell. Ms. Beth, over to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lorraine Nesbeth. I have been a pharmacist for close to 15 years. I'm a new kid on the block when it comes down to AMS. I recently completed the course. For I, I feel extremely privileged to be working with such a seemingly focused group of individuals. And I look forward to lending my expertise both in EMS and in pharmacy to this group to basically make the class be as best as they can to further their um their their career goals. I've heard Mr. Baines and others and Mr. Powell, Mr. Wilson, Miss Lewis, when she spoke about when they spoke about you know enhancing their career choice, making a change. I can relate to that and I look forward to contributing. Thank you very much. All right, so we have Romaine joining us. Romaine is having connection problems. Oh, he's having connection problems. I have been delaying to speak to the um, course because I wanted as many persons as possible to be in the room when we speak about what the course entails and what it is that our expectations are going to be for this course. And so, um, I really don't want to have to do this twice. <laughs> I think the, sec the session is being recorded. So. Okay. All right, so is Mr. Oh, all right, so we're just going to move straight into it then. And for those who join later, we will deal with them accordingly. All right, so let me say that our course, this course, begins today. And we will be, yes, Mr. Baines, go right ahead. 
Um, ma'am, good morning again. I'm right beside Mr. Tyrrell. He could um, tell you about himself and my platform. Oh, okay, sure. And do you have others with you besides yes, him? Yes, I do. Yes, ma'am. Well, okay, so then what we will do is just have them use your platform and go ahead and introduce themselves. Thank you so much for that. Okay, ma'am. Mr. Tyrrell coming up right now. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, good morning. We're hearing you. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Romain Terrell. Um, I was selected to do this course. I'm, I'm very, very enthused about the medical field. All right. Um, I really appreciate the, the, the course. Um, I do hope, right, that I complete this course, right? I'll do my utmost best to complete the course. All right, is there anything you'd like to share with us about yourself, Mr. Terrell? Yes, but um, I'll let that wait. All right, very well. Okay. All right, please remember to share your video if you can. Say again? So please remember to share your video. So the next person who is coming, and if we can just see what you look like before you go. Uh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, good morning. My name is Shane Morris. I'm a past student of Glenmire High. I've been a soldier for the past nine years. I've been employed as a medical assistant for five of them. All right, I'm hoping with this course, I'll be better equipped to carry out my functions as a, as a medical assistant more effectively, more efficient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Akiko Cameron. I'm a past student of the St. George's College. Um, I'm a soldier at the Jamaica Defense Force, a medical assistant for the past nine years, currently enrolled in the physiotherapy department as a physiotherapist technician. Um, I was selected for this course because my commander's so, um, I'm enthused about medicine and all it has to offer. From this course, I hope to gain as much knowledge as I can and that my instructors will show me the best way forward and guide me accordingly. So, going forward, I'll put out my best foot forward. So, thank you in advance. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morris. No, Mr. Camera. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Esmo Smith. I've been a medical assistant for the past. Can I hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Yeah, so I've been, my name is Esmo Smith. I've been a medical assistant for the past three years. Um, I've always, wanted this course to basically take myself to the next level. Six. I've been here for three years. All right. And uh, it's my passion. I have a passion for the medical field. 
Uh, I'm hoping to do my utmost best on this course. Um, something about myself. First and foremost, I'm an Arsenal fan. You know, so I love to play football in my spare time. Um, I do a little bit of reading here and there. Otherwise, I'm not, that's it. All right, thank you, Mr. Smith. You're welcome. So I'll pass it on to the next person now, Mr. Morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm Mr. Donald Chantilou, a military personnel, also a medical assistant, and a lot more to add. But for now, I am glad to be a member of this course. Looking forward for more activities. I am also enthused. I like to be active. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else with you? Not at the moment. Two more to join. Okay. Later, all right, how many persons do you have um, in the room with you now? How many persons are there? Seven of us. Okay, so I have seven and one online, so we have two missing. All right. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just going to move now into speaking about the course and what the course entails. The so first of all, the course normally runs for about eight weeks, and I think it's about that time or a little bit longer that we will be engaged for this time around. And we also have a holiday because the course stretches from now until June, until sorry, until um, January. So it means that it goes over into the Christmas holidays. You will get a timetable that will give you an idea of how the course is going to be structured. I want you to bear in mind that the timetable is not cast in stone. And therefore, there may be, um, we might have to change things around as we go along. And that is dependent, of course, on how the class performs as we move forward. One of the things that I want you to bear in mind very, very early up is when you get the timetable, you might see on it where it says student time. I want you to know that that doesn't mean that it is holiday, but that it is a time for you to either complete assignments or to prepare for exams, right? As we touch on the issue of exam, your exams will be online. Most of them, that is, will be online. And they can take different forms. But that will be in the form of multiple choice questions that you will have to do, um, which I believe most of them will be in that form. You can also be given written assignments to be sent in for marking. Now I want to caution you as it relates to the written assignments to be sent in that when you do submit, you will submit to Mr. Rufus and you will copy your assignment to the FEMS email address that will be given. Now, when you send in your assignments, they are to be properly labeled. So you must have a subject heading that speaks to what the assignment is and you must address your instructor. So it is not okay for you to just upload something and send it. 
right? Am I being clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well. Yes, ma'am. Very yes, well, thank you. Good. Now, Charles will address when he speaks to you exactly what the assignments will be like and as you go through the course, because for different modules, you will have different assessment, different styles of assessment, and he will speak more specifically to that. The important thing and the takeaway is that whatever is submitted to Mr. Rufus must also be submitted to the FEMS email which he has put in the chat. Now, I will also put in the chat my number that you can communicate with me via WhatsApp. Now, the WhatsApp, when you WhatsApp me, that is for a quick response. If you need a yes or a no answer on something, then you can WhatsApp me. All official communication must be sent to the FEMS email. If you need to verify anything about the course, complaint about anything, then it must be sent directly to the FEMS email. Right? Now, if it is that you are running late for a class or something happened, then you can send me a WhatsApp. If you are going to be unavoidably absent from a class, then you need to send an official email to the FEMS email. We understand that people are at home. Some persons may be at home that is doing the course. And it's very easy for us to relax in our beds and to say, all right, let us just log into this course. I'm going to caution you that you might want to think differently about that because, in fact, you're going to need to be focused. And I would encourage you that you get up in the mornings and you get dressed would be coming to class. Ensure that your environment is conducive as much as possible to learning. The content of the course is pretty heavy and you are going to need to be able to focus on that. Having said that, we have also made provisions for persons who might have to be unavoidably absent or you might be late or you're having connectivity issues because we do recognize that these are some of the things that happen with the online. And so your classes will be recorded and you will be able to retrieve that information at a later date. So I encourage you, if for whatever reason that you are absent, that you do not allow the day to pass without reviewing the material. I'm also going to encourage you to read ahead so that you can be familiar with the material as your instructor is going through the information with you. Sometimes we are distracted because we have other things going on around us and because we are online and most persons would have their cameras off and so they may be distracted in doing other things and so you miss critical information. I'm going to ask you to please be as focused as possible. Ask the questions that you need to ask. Ensure that you are familiar with the material. And why am I emphasizing this so much? Because we have a period on the timetable, it looks about two weeks, maybe a week and a half over the Christmas holidays that you're going to be having work to do on your own. 
and when you come back in January, basically you're coming back into exams, right? It is going to be your evaluation period that is coming up on you shortly. If you miss the classes now, or you're distracted while classes are going on, and you miss the information, I'm going to say to you that you will not do as well as you would like to. Right? It's important that you get all your questions answered. Yes. Or you can send them by email. So if it is that you've come upon something that you're not sure or you need further explanation, then I ask that you take those questions to class and ask because whatever it is that you may not understand could also be beneficial to somebody else. So I'm encouraging that we share as we go along. Now, the course is divided into nine modules and you're expected to pass each module successfully in order to achieve your certificate of achievement at the end of the course. Now, why do I say certificate of achievement? Because there are three certificates that you can walk away with at the end of the course. And that is your certificate of achievement, the certificate of participation, or a certificate of attendance. And the difference between these certificates, as the name suggests, achievement meant that you would means that you would have completed the course successfully, both theoretically and practically. And that your behavior is also up to par. Now, you are online and we're not interacting as much as we would if we were in a face-to-face -face setting. And therefore, your assessment also comes in the form of how well you're able to follow instructions that's given to you, how well you're able to control your background and your level of participation in class. We we'll also have an opportunity to meet with you face to face when we come for the practical sessions. And we expect that persons will adhere to the rules that will be sent to you via email in our handbook. So you'll receive a handbook that will outline what our expectations are for you for this course. So your certificate of participation means that you would have come through the course, you would have completed the course, but you may have a few exams that are outstanding because if you fail an exam, you have the you have the choice of either resitting the exam or not. But you will only receive a certificate of part a certificate of achievement if it is that you have completed all modules successfully. Successfully means that you would have scored 70% or higher on each module. So your pass mark is 70%. And for your skill, you must demonstrate competency. Now, as I said, the certificate of participation means that you would have had some exam or a module that is outstanding that you use either not to resit or you resit it and still was not able to pass the exam. Now, students have an opportunity to do a resit of each module twice. So you would have your first sitting of the exam. If you didn't pass that, then you have the opportunity of resitting that module. If you didn't pass the first resit, you have a second chance of resitting. If at the end, <clears throat> sorry, 
after your second reset, you're not able to pass it, then what we recommend is that you have remediation for that module. Remediation means that you would need to come back at another time to the classes and redo that module because we believe that three settings you are not able to pass, it means that you have missed the fundamentals of that module. And therefore, we ask that you get some remediation class for that. Now, the certificate of attendance means that your practical skills are woefully lacking and that theoretically you were also not able to complete the core the, the, the module successfully. Right? But you would have come and you would have had at least 90% attendance in the course. And so you would have been awarded a certificate of attendance. Before I continue, do you have any questions? Oh, no. All right. So, having said all that, in a nutshell, it is to say that the amount of work that you put in for this course is going to be directly reflected in what certificate you achieve at the end of the course. It's a lot of work, guys. I don't know how many of you may have done any research about what it is that you're coming into, but it is a lot of work. And others have done it before you and have been successful. And I'm sure you can do it, but it calls for commitment. I touched earlier on protocol for your for online. Now I want you to feel as if you are in a classroom. So even though we are online and you can't see the person who is speaking to you probably most of the times, because sometimes, for example, this morning, if I were to turn on my video, you will not hear me, right? So I know that some of us have difficulty with the, with the technology, but I implore you to make it feel as much as possible like a classroom setting. So feel free to ask your questions. No question is a foolish question except the one that you don't ask, right? Be mindful, though, that your background sounds can interrupt the lecturer who is speaking and also for your classmates. So once you're not speaking, please ensure that your mic is muted and to minimize the background noises as best as, as, best as possible. Um, normally, for this course, we would have hospital experience that you would do. Now, because of COVID-19 and how things are, we will not expose you to that. What it means, therefore, is that for that time period in which you would have had your hospital rotation, it's going to be used for more of, more of your practical sessions. Now, for your practical sessions, you are not going to all come as a group of 14 or 15 students, right? You will be put in groups of five, maximum of six on any given day that your practical will be. Now those sessions will be, as we get further down into the course, we let you know when you will be scheduled for. So on the days that you're not scheduled for practical, it means that you would have some assignment that you're working on to have it completed, right? I 
there any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Right. Okay, then. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that I need to speak to you about. And I think basically that is it for right now. So the rest of what you hear will come from Mr. Rufus as he detail more into what the courts involve and what he is he will be expecting of you. So just before I go though, I want you to know that any issues that you are having, you need to let me know. And you will do so by sending me an email. All right? Mr. Rufus, over to you. All right, Mrs. Mackay, um, at this point, we're going to take a five minute break and then we will resume. So take a five minute breather and we will continue after that.
Okay, I am back. Please raise your hand if you can hear me clearly. Okay. And put those hands down. All right, so we're going to get into the introduction phase of the course. All right? Now, before I start the first chapter, just a valid point I want to reinforce. So one, no, not one, to be successful in the course, you need to be able to pass the written exams. You need to be able to successfully complete the, the practicals at the minimum, minimal acceptable level, and your conduct must be appropriate for the EMS field. Right? So keep that in mind. The course has nine modules. However, there are modules within the course that I refer to these modules as fundamentals, right? So the fundamentals. The fundamental modules will form the core of your EMT training, and you will build on your fundamentals. Now, to form that core, you're required to have a, a reasonable understanding or be reasonably familiar with anatomy and physiology. So you need to know structure, you need to understand function. You must be knowledgeable in airway, anatomy, structure, and problems with the airway and how to correct those problems. So airway management is a fundamental as well. Anatomy and physiology, airway management. You must be able to assess a patient regardless of whether that patient is a trauma or medical patient. You must have a sequential approach to assessing that patient because in an emergency setting, you work under pressure. So whatever you're doing must be, um, it requires minimal thinking, right? So there is a sequential assessment that's required. That's patient assessment. So anatomy and physiology, airway management, patient assessment. The other fundamental is you must be able to recognize when a patient is going into shock and determine what type of shock and the appropriate management for that. Right? So leading and shock management is also a fundamental module. These are the core modules within this course. Once you're able to, to master these modules, then the remaining portion of the course will be easy. Well, I don't want to use the word easy, but the remaining portion of the course will be manageable. Yes, Ms. Nesbitt. Although it was said by Mrs. Makaya already, I just want to emphasize the point that these modules that you're talking about, they require a lot of reading and retaining material because you have to be able to manage your time properly. You have to be able to devote at least two hours per day to the material in order to complete the course in a comfortable manner. So even though it's, it's said, we should we should overemphasize it. It's a lot of reading. The material material is bulky, and in order to get through the course comfortably, you have to devote the time to do these to to read through and focus on these modules. All right. Thank you, Miss Nesbitt, for that input. All right. So, lot of reading, learn your core modules. Very important. Now, class is scheduled to begin at 8.30. Um, that time can change, but it, the required time is scheduled for 8.30 to 4.30. I am very time specific. 
right? So I'm time specific. And in EMS, your time management is gonna become extremely important. If you're going to be late for class, I expect to be notified prior to, and there must be uh, a, a good reason for that, right? So ensure that you're on time. Once the clock hit 8.30, that's when I start or begin the lesson, regardless of whether you're present or not, right? If you miss the session, I think Mrs. Mackay emphasized that it will be recorded. Now, until you have your online access, you will not be able to access the recording. So I will not be downloading the recording and sending the recordings to students, right? You will access the recordings once you have full access to the platform. Mrs. Mackay, you have any information on when that would be possible? By tomorrow, I'll be better able to give them an update on that when I meet with IT. All right, no problem. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, apart from the access, I, I've sent out the email, an email with the timetable, um, PowerPoints for Section 1, and the assignment for Section 1. So you have the, the PowerPoints. You should have your textbook or have access to a textbook or working on getting access to a textbook, right? So work begins officially after today all right now with that said i'm gonna get into the first chapter so <clears throat> as i go through the chapter if you have a question that is relevant to the information being presented raise your hand if you're having connection problems you can type that question into the chat and if I am able to address the question at that point, I will, right? I'm not able to give you a definitive response. It means I will provide you with a response at a later date, probably the next day, right? <clears throat> so keep that in mind. All right, so let's start off with the one. All right, so raise your hand if you can see the PowerPoint clearly. Okay. All right, I only see. Okay, good, good. All right, good to go. All right, excellent. All right, so the first chapter, chapter one, is EMS system. All right, no. You need to know what you're getting into. And I hope, right? I hope that research was done prior to starting this course because it wouldn't be rational for you to get into a course that you know nothing about, right? So if we're going to do studies, in, complete studies in a particular area, we normally do some research in that area to know what it is that we're getting into, right? So let's start with chapter one. All right, going straight into the introduction. So introduction, right? The emergency care and transport of the sick and injured, 11th edition will be the primary text for this course. However, on the platform, you will have access to the Brady PowerPoint and other materials that will supplement the primary source. All right, now, who can tell me what an EMS system is? in your opinion? Mr. Bates. Oh, Mr. Manning volunteered. Go ahead, Mr. Manning. 
Uh, good morning again, Mr. Rufus. Um, in my opinion, I would say EMS system is providing emergency medical service, as its name suggests. Um, this is basically providing care for personnel in emergency situations before actually arriving at the hospital where they can be provided with additional care. Okay, that's reasonable. Anybody else? Mr. Powell, if you don't volunteer, I'll choose. Mr. Zandre Powell, I believe that's your name. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, uh, EMS system is, uh, well, it's a sequence as stated. So it's a sequence of action. Well, sequence of steps are actions that you carry out in giving emergency care to a particular individual from the person becoming ill to you securing the scene and providing care for that person until you get them further medical care at that okay. hospital. Good. That is reasonable as well. Good. So we have a general understanding. So an EMS system is an organized, well-organized system that's set up to receive calls as it relates to medical or traumatic emergencies. When these calls come in, they are vetted by a dispatcher, and usually this dispatcher is trained, right? Emergency medical dispatcher to, to assess the information that they receive and determine what would be the most appropriate response, whether police, fire, or ambulance in the form of BLS, basic life support, or, or ALS, advanced life support is required, right? So, and it can be a situation where all, all of these um, organizations or entities are required based on the nature of the emergency. All right, so EMS system, team of healthcare professionals provides emergency care and transport it is governed by state laws, right? So it must be governed by laws. There has to be some, some level of accountability for what is um, being conducted in the field. All right, now course description. After you complete this course, you are eligible to take either the National Registry of EMT, EMT's exam or your state certification exam. So the Curriculum that we use for this course is the D Department of Transportation curriculum that is utilized by the, the EMS schools in the United States, right? Now, the National Registry is a non-governmental organization that is set up that w provides testing and registration for EMTs for hire when they complete a recognized EMS training course in the States. So the purpose of the registry certification for EMS providers in the state is if they wish to move from one state to another, right? So if they need to move from, from New York to California to work, then it, the National Registry EMT certification grants reciprocity for that purpose, right? And it also grants, um, it gives them the, the requirements needed to apply for either a state certification or a state license. So within Jamaica, we do not have a, a national registry for EMT. But in the Caribbean, we have what is called a Caribbean registry, right? So if you are successful in completing this course, you would have met the requirements to test for the Caribbean registry EMT certification. And we can talk more about that down the line, right? Now in the States, after you pass the exam, you are eligible for a state license. Not every state grants license. So some states, all you need is the state certification. In others, 
you are required to have both the state certification and the state license in order for you to be allowed to practice as a EMS provider. <clears throat> All right, now most states have four training and licensure, licensure levels. You have EMR, EMT, AEMT, they have paramedics, right? So the EMR or emergency medical responder is the lowest level of EMS provider training. So an EMR, think of an EMR course as a, a first aid course with a EMS component, right? So it covers first aid, but it ties into the EMS approach. So these are firefighters, these are police officers, ski patrollers, park patrollers, that the first persons to arrive on the, the scene, they are trained to provide basic um, first aid management of medical emergencies and injuries, right? So the EMR, functions outside of the, the ambulance. So their, their function is outside of the ambulance, not inside. In other words, under no circumstances should an EMR be on an ambulance responsible for a patient. That's a no-no, right? However, an EMT, AEMT, or paramedic can request the EMR assistance on scene and in the back of the, the unit, right? So they can ride in the back of the unit if they are assisting a higher level EMS provider. So that's an EMR. Now, the EMT, emergency medical technician, this is the level that you will be trained at this course now, and this is a level of provider that is very dominant worldwide so we tend to have a lot of emts in jamaica outside jamaica and overseas right the ems sorry the emt is the first level of provider to function in a bls response system or ambulance, right? So they function in a basic life support unit. The EMT is trained to assess medical and traumatic emergencies and provide appropriate treatment, right? They can use certain basic airway adjuncts. They can provide spinal motion restriction for a patient with possible spinal injury. They, they are trained in using extrication device, right? So on and so forth. <clears throat> but their main function is a function within the, the DLS response system. So they will provide field care, stabilize whatever the emergency is, put the patient in the back of the unit, continue ongoing care until they reach the hospital and handover, right? So that's the EMT. So the EMT is also one of the most disrespected or unrecognized level of EMS training, right? Uh, uh, EMT once said to me that uh, EMT is like a spear tire, right? So an EMT, is a spear tire. You don't value the spear tire until you need it, right? So the EMT is actually one of the most important levels of EMS care because this is where you learn your fundamentals, right? And nothing takes priority over basic fundamentals. It doesn't matter how high you up you go in EMS training. It doesn't matter if you can intubate a patient, start an IV, or decompress a patient's chest. 
if you don't know to open a patient's airway and maintain the patient's airway and prevent that patient from bleeding out then that means nothing right basic always comes before advance so the next level is the AEMT or advanced emergency medical technician level the AEMT is an EMT who has gone through additional training right so they cover more anatomy and physiology they also cover pathophysiology advanced assessment they can use certain advanced airway equipments they can give certain medication they're able to do IV intravenous access IO access intraosseous access right not many persons are trained at that level because most persons will move from EMT to paramedic, right? <clears throat> then you have the paramedic level. This is the highest level that's recognized under the DOT curriculum. So this is an EMT, a paramedic is still an EMT. So a paramedic is an EMT who has gone through extensive training in emergency field care, advanced emergency field care. So they, they cover all aspects of advanced airway management, um, drug calculation, drug administration, right? Intraosseous IV access, static cardiology, dynamic cardiology, right? And they can do certain invasive procedures. Um, tracheostomy, um, <clears throat> needle decompression, right? Now, outside of these four levels, there are other levels, but they do not fall under the DOT curriculum, right? So after paramedic, you have critical care paramedic, which is a paramedic who specialize you have um, community medicine paramedics, right? You have emergency practitioners. So these are paramedics that have gone on to do additional training, but it is not within the DOT curriculum. So that's the four levels, all right? So an EMR has very basic training, provides care before ambulance arrives, may assist in the ambulance. An EMT has training in basic life support. Basic life support including automated external defibrillation, earway adjuncts, assisting patients with certain medications. So basic life support is not specific to CPR, right? It's much broader than that. An AEMT has training in specific aspects of advanced life support, which includes IV therapy, administration of limited number of emergency medications. A paramedic has extensive ALS training, including endotracheal intubation, emergency pharmacology, cardiac monitoring, and other advanced assessment and treatment skills. All right. Now I'm going to go through the course description. That was explained in the orientation. You have nine modules. You will have exams. Majority of the exams will be multiple choice you have the practicals. Now, for the practicals, I demonstrate, you practice, I test. That's how it works. I demonstrate the, the practical, you practice, I test. Each practical is time specific. You must be able to complete the skill within the specified time, and it must meet the criteria. So. You will have access to your skill sheets. The skill sheets will show you what you're, you're given points for, and it will show you what your critical 
um, areas are for that particular skill. Once you miss a critical area, you have failed the skill. <clears throat> Once you have failed the skill, I will only, well, you will be allowed to reset that, that skill once, right? After the, so if you're allowed a second time to reset the skill and you're not successful, you need remediation at that point. You're missing something that's fundamentally important, right? The majority of the written will be multiple choice. You'll have some assignments. Written assignments, you'll have a, a drug calculation paper. You'll have to um, submit a drug card as well, or drug cards for the pharmacology module. Let me backtrack a bit. Okay. All right. Now, EMT training focus and requirement. EMTs are the backbone of EMS systems in the United States. EMTs provide emergency care to the sick and injured. Some patients are in life threatening situations, others require only supportive care. Right? So, you'll be trained to provide. Some of the subjects discussed in this course include, but it's not limited to, scene size up, patient assessment, treatment, packaging, and the EMS as a career, right? So difference between a career and a job is a job provides you a paycheck. Uh, if you look at, if, if you are focusing on EMS as a career, then you will see a path to the highest level. If you take it as a career, it means you're going to move from an EMT level to paramedic or even beyond paramedic. That's the difference. All right, so licensure requirements. Requirements differ from state to state. I mentioned this before, right? General requirements to be an EMT are high school diploma or equivalent, proof of immunization, successful completion of a background check and drug screening, and a valid driver's license. Successful completion required of sorry, so successful completion of required courses and certification exams. So you must complete the, the coursework, you must pass your exams must be able to demonstrate mental and physical abilities necessary to perform the job. So you must be able to physically do what is required, and you must be able to do that under pressure. All right? <clears throat> All right. All right. So let's look at the history of EMS. So origin started from... World War I, where they had volunteer ambulances, right? Then in World War II, it evolved to field care, right? Where they were able to provide care to the wounded soldiers in the field and then get them to, to the field operation where they, they, they had um, a setup of a field hospital, right? And in the Korean conflict, that evolved to what they call a field medic. So this is where they had a field medic, a soldier that was trained to provide care to the wounded in the field. They had helicopters to evacuate, and they had a, a mash unit Set up, set up, right? Which is basically a field hospital. All right, now, while all of that was taking place as it relates to the war, back in the States, 
that was not the what was available right so in the states there was no standard right it it but EMS, EMS was in one state was completely different in another. Um, persons were not properly trained. The training wasn't standardized, right? And research was conducted and a paper was released in 1966, Accidental Debt and Disability, the Neglected Disease of Modern Society, established, in e established EMS. And basically what this paper showed is that quite a, a large number of um, persons in the States were dying from accidents, right? And a large number of persons were dying from motor vehicle accidents in, and this death rate was much higher in comparison to the death rate of soldiers in the war, right? And as a result of that, some changes had to be made. And the changes that were made is they develop a standardized approach for training. They develop specification for ambulances. They improved the equipment. They incorporated medical direction and protocols and scope of practice, right? And then the system became more organized and that is what ex they have built on and improved over the years and exists currently in the United States, right? In the early 1970s, DOT published the first EMT training curriculum. And in 1971, the first textbook for EMT training came out. <clears throat> All right, so national standardized, standard, standardization efforts. You have the DOT, which is the, where the, you have the national standard curriculum. Um, in 1980s, we had advanced levels of EMTs and in 1990s, the Nas National Highway Traffic and Safety Act came out, which outlined the EMS agenda for the future. All right, so levels of training, you have federal level, national EMS scope of practice model provides guidelines. Now, the scope of practice for EMS providers is what you are allowed to perform or do at that level. So that's what we call scope of practice, right? The standard of care is how you execute that task. So the scope of practice is what you are allowed to do. The standard of care is how you carry out the task. Right now, state level, provides laws and regulates EMS operation. And at the local level, you have what, what is called a medical director that provides oversight. So an EMS system cannot operate independently, right? You are an extension of the medical physician arm in the field. And it is usually a ER physician consultant with EMS training, right? So it's either they did some type of master's or fellowship program in EMS, or they were EMS providers prior to becoming doctors. But whoever is going to be the medical director for an EMS system must have knowledge of the system. So you cannot provide direction if you don't know how a system works, right? <clears throat> All right, now public BLS and immediate aid. Now millions of lay people are trained in BLS and CPR, including teachers, coaches, and child care providers. This is something that we need to work on in Jamaica. And um, yes, I've been told that it's, it, it is currently going on. However, 
the first aid and BLS training that is provided in Jamaica is not regulated. And if it's not regulated, then it's not consistent, right? So if a program is not con um, standardized in how you carry out the program, you, you will develop inconsistencies. And when you have inconsistencies, that's where the patient will suffer, right? So the public definitely needs to be educated. That is very, very important to EMS progressing in Jamaica, public education. Public must be educated and they must know their role in an emergency situation. What is the role of EMS? And there should be a proper dispatch system where we have trained dispatchers to relay information to the callers until EMS arrives, right? All right, now <clears throat> there are 14 components of the EMS system. One, public access, right? So public must have access to the system. Whether that's uh, 119, 911, there must be a way to access the system. Must have clinical care, medical direction, integration of health services, uh, information system, prevention, EMS research, communication system, human resources, and legislation and regulation. Right? Evaluation system finance, public education, education systems. All of these components are important. So public as access, 911 system must be accessed accessible to the public right the dispatch having a dispatch system is extremely important to having a good ems response system dispatchers obtain information and dispatch resources emergency medical dispatch system provides medical instructions right so uh ems dispatcher can provide the caller with information as it relates to first aid procedures that they can perform or do until EMS is available. All right, must have a good communication system. All right, now the clinical care. You must have the appropriate equipment. You must be familiar with the equipments that you're using and you must know your primary service area. Human resources focuses on people who deliver the care. So um, the persons that work as EMS providers should have um, appropriate compensation, should have job satisfaction, right? And if you're not properly compensated or you're not satisfied with the job, you're not gonna perform, right? And if you're at that point in EMS, it's time for you to seek a different career because with EMS, we're talking about people's lives. And if you're not going to fully commit to what you're doing, then you shouldn't be doing it in this type of career because it can have significant consequences on the patient and their family members. Medical direction, right? Physician medical director authorize, authorizes EMTs to provide medical care in the field. Um, the medical director is respond, responsible for standing orders and protocols, right? And the medical director will give either online or offline medical direction. Offline is your standing orders and protocols. Right? For instance, you find a patient that is unresponsive, with a pulse, not ventilating. You have a standing order or protocol that says if you find a patient that's unresponsive, with a pulse, no ventilation, secure the airway with an airway adjunct, 
and provide positive pressure ventilation. So you don't need to call your medical director for that, right? It's a standing order. The online medical direction is when you contact your medical director directly to get instructions. For instance, have a patient with a history of severe respiratory distress after being stung by a wasp or bee. I have given the maximum dose of epinephrine. Patient's breathing has not improved. Requesting further instructions. Right? So I have exceeded the requirements based on the standing order and I'm not getting any result. So I have to call my medical director for further guidance. Right? Uh, EMS system cannot function without a medical director. Right? If, you, if it is functioning without a medical director, it is operating illegally. Right? You must have medical direction. As EMS providers, we do not work independently. We are guided. All right. So the medical director also acts as the, the link between other medical professionals, right? And as I mentioned before, they provide offline and online medical direction. Right now, legislation and regulation. Training protocols and practices follow state legislation. Senior EMS officials handles administrative tasks, scheduling personnel budgets, pur purchasing vehicle maintenance. And currently, in Jamaica, there is no regulations or laws in place that governs the EMS operations in Jamaica. All right, now integration of health services. Pre-hospital care is coordinated with hospital care, right? So both work together, right? You stabilize, you assess, stabilize, or treat in the field. You maintain that transport the patient to the hospital, the doctors and nurses build on what you initiated, and that in increases the patient's chance of survival. If there is an absence of pre-hospital care, then it means that when that patient reaches the hospital, the doctors and nurses will have to perform emergency care. Or in other words, they would have to do what you should have done in the field. So the patient is going to lose time because they should be focused on doing the, the definitive management. But they have to be doing emergency management because the patient is not stabilized. So the outcome is the patient suffers, right? And it's important that a good relationship develops between the the pre-hospital care providers and in-hospital in care, right? So um, there is no room for the discussion to determine which one is better. That's not important. It's not even a question that should be, be asked, right? Because there is a difference. We function in the field. They function in the hospital. What you do is important, what they do is also important, right? And that is how we should look at it. <clears throat> now, EMS systems collaborate with hospitals to improve treatment for patients with heart attacks, trauma, and stroke, right? And we have the mobile integrated healthcare, which is a new method of delivering healthcare. It utilizes the pre hospital spectrum, evolved from the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. That's the act that Obama passed, or the same act that they call Obamacare. Healthcare provided within the community by teams of professionals, right? So these are our EMS providers that have been trained in community medicine, 
that goes out in the field and provide cures care to persons with chronic illnesses or injuries so that they don't need to go to a health care center or turn up at a hospital. And if it's a serious situation, then they can provide the, the pre-hospital emergency care and transport the patient. Right? I think it's a, a very good approach to, to um, improve the the um, the amount of persons that are accessing the hospital system and clinics. All right, now MIH created additional training levels for EMS providers, including community paramedicine, right, which is a specialized training. Paramedics receive advanced training to provide services within a community. Community paramedics provide additional services. All right, evaluation. Medical director is responsible for maintaining quality control. We have continuous quality improvement, reviews, audits, EMS system, right? All of these things must be done. It's very important, right? You must evaluate if what you're doing is effective. Refresher training or continuing education is important, right? And to do so would be a breach of duty. So if you're an EMT and you're not up to date, right? You haven't done recertification or refresher. That's a breach of duty. And it is your responsibility. It's not your organization responsibility. It is your responsibility to ensure once your certification is going to expire, you have completed a refresher or recertification before touching a patient, right? Remember what I said, failure to do so is a breach of duty and you can be prosecuted on negligence, right? Now, with proper quality control, CQ, refresher training and continuing education, this will reduce the possibility of errors. <clears throat> Must have a, a good information system, right? The system must be financed, and EMS is not cheap, right? EMS is not cheap. Um, the average call for cost of an average call in the States is going to range between 5000 to 25000 US. EMS is not cheap. <clears throat> All right, now system finance. Personnel may be volunteer or a mix. EMTs may be asked to gather insurance information, secure signatures, obtain permission from patients to bill insurance. All right, education must have a proper um, well-structured education program. The instructors in the states are required to have license, right? They're also required to do refreshers. All right, now, ALS instructors, and directors must hold a four-year degree. Training is provided in college, adult career center, or hospital setting. All right, prevention and public education. Prevention and public education, two components of the EMS system with a focus on public health. Emphasis on prevention, right? Prevention is always better than cure. EMS works with public health agencies on primary and secondary prevention. These are things you can read on your own. All right, research. Um, EMS is moving towards evidence-based practice, right? So they're, they're doing research to ensure that what we're doing, the equipments that we're using in the field makes a difference. You can read about that when you review the chapter. Now, rules and responsibilities of the EMT. Keep vehicles and equipment ready. 
ensure safety for you, your crew, bystanders, the patient. Be familiar with emergency vehicle operation. Um, you may take the role of a un unseen um, leader. You must be able to evaluate the scene, and evaluation of the scene is constant. Call for additional resources as needed. Gain patient access, perform patient assessment, give emergency medical care while awaiting additional medical resources. All right, give emotional support, maintain continuity of care, resolve emergency incidents uphold medical and legal standards, ensure and protect patient privacy. You must give administrative support, constantly continue professional development, constantly continue professional development. Cultivate and sustain community relations, give back to the profession. Right? Professional attributes, integrity, Empathy, you must care about the people that you're, you're treating. You must be self-motivated, right? You must have intrinsic motivation, right? If that's not there, you shouldn't be doing this. You must be confident in what you're doing. Good time management, you must be able to communicate well. Right? You must be able to function in a team and you must be diplomatic. Right? You must be respectful of others. You must be a patient advocate and you must deliver care effectively in the field. So every patient is entitled to compassion, respect, and the best care. EMTs are bound by patient confidentiality. Right, and there's an act for that, and that's the the end of chapter one. So that's an idea of what an EMS system is, who the providers are within that system, the, the components that are needed for that system to function effectively, what is your role, and what it means to be a professional in EMS. So the first three chapters of the EMT textbook are very boring, but they are extremely important because we often read through these chapters and we don't think about it much, right? And it's very important that we understand the professional attributes, what is expected of us as professionals. You must master your craft. Right, so you must know all areas of your craft. Can't be a EMS provider and a doctor or a nurse telling you about an aspect of your job that you're not familiar with. You must know all aspects of your job. That is extremely important. Any questions at this point? No questions? No, oh, sir. All right. All right, we'll take a 10 minute break. So we'll resume at 10 30. <laughs> 